Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe Parker with the Santa Barbara Group, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. And today I'm gonna to dive into the top three most expensive neighborhoods and the top three least expensive neighborhoods right here in Santa Barbara, where I've been selling real estate for 22 years. I love making these videos to educate you guys about my hometown where this place here has provided me the most amazing life and I want to share it with you in case this is a place that you're looking to get into or maybe you're already here and you're just wanting to know more about the community. This is the channel for you. I'm making videos all the time about everything Santa Barbara and right now we're going to dive into the top three most expensive neighborhoods. Number one, we've got Montecito. This is clearly the most expensive neighborhood in town. We've got celebrities living in Montecito. There's the royal family extension. I don't know if they're still royals anymore, but they're living in Montecito. We've got business moguls, the people that are behind all the companies that we all use every day that we don't really know about, but these top one percenters or the you know, 0.1 of one percenters living in this area. Now, Montecito is an idyllic community surrounded by mountains and the ocean. It has a certain sense of luxury, but it's a bit more laid back as well. Not like LA, you know, you've got Beverly Hills. It feels a little bit more pretentious. Montecito tends to be a bit more laid back. There are sections of it that have that vibe, you know, the vibe like walking along Coast Village Road, you might pick it up there. But as you go into the community, it tends to relax a bit. And one of the things that's really special about Montecito is the privacy. They really value their privacy. Some of the things the community does to help, you know, kind of instill this sense of privacy, there's a no paparazzi law in Montecito. So paparazzi is illegal. That's why you won't see the Harry and Meghan being stalked by cars once they're in Montecito and probably one of the reasons why they chose to move here. Another great aspect of Montecito are the mountains. We've got hiking trails all over the place that are really popular. You could park your car and get right up into our foothills where we've got waterfalls, swimming holes, lots of great lookouts to look out at the ocean, across the channel to the islands. If you get high enough, you could look over the islands and beyond. It's a really beautiful place to go hiking, get some exercise, get out in mother nature underneath the oak trees walk along the chaparral maybe even see some wildlife now the opposite spectrum the beaches of Montecito there's quite a few amazing ones probably the most popular one is Butterfly Beach this beach is right along Channel Drive across the street from the Biltmore Hotel this resort has been closed for a while it's under remodel the community's waiting for it to open. They're gonna love to see that. But the beach right in front of it is amazing. It's a smaller beach, so at a low tide is really the best time to enjoy that beach. At the high tide, the water may come all the way up to the wall, depending on how high the tides are. Now, these are all the great things about Montecito, but of course, every community has some of their cons, some of the negatives. And so, what are the negatives in Montecito? Well, some of the things I notice, one is traffic. So. We've got the 101 freeway going through Montecito and for the last decade plus, they've been expanding the 101 so there's been lots of construction and the freeway itself just gets bogged down. So then a lot of people using the Waze app or whatever to navigate traffic and get around it, they'll scoot through the community. So we do have quite a few streets that on the busier times or if the freeway's jammed up, you'll see that the surface streets through Montecito will be backed up and the traffic signs can get you know, full of cars. So it just takes a little bit of patience to get through them when that's happening. Another thing about Montecito that some people may not like is when you're down by the beach, you're also near the train tracks. So a lot of the most exclusive properties also have the train fairly close to them. So that train does go right through the community down by the beach. Um, you hear it, you see it sometimes, it goes by really quick, but it is potentially a negative, especially for those lots and those homes that are right there next to it. Another thing, Montecito does have quite a few older homes. So a lot of the homes, multi-million dollar properties, yet they need full renovations. They may be a bit tired and old, so something to consider. If that's what you're interested in, you want that newer homes, they're definitely there, but you're gonna be paying a premium for them. All right, now, second most expensive community in Santa Barbara has to be Hope Ranch. Hope Ranch is located in Santa Barbara proper along the coast up towards the northern end before you get into the area of Goleta. Now this is 
uh, exclusive community. It's not gated, but it feels private and gated. It has a main drag that goes through it, Marina Drive, that will take you from one end to the other. Some of the things that make Hope Ranch very special is that it has these really sweet undulating little hills that make up the community. So you get these different little vistas and lots of privacy. There's a lot of oak trees that create a lot of shade. So walking the neighborhood, urban hiking is really nice, especially on hot days. It has wonderful amenities like horseback riding. It has 26 miles of bridle trail throughout the community there so you can jump on a horse and just ride right through your community on these nice little trails that go along the roads and off the roads into private little areas you could also ride it down to the private beach probably the most popular thing about living in Hope Ranch is their private beach. It's gated, so you need key access to get down to it. It has its own parking lot. You could drive right down, drop off all your stuff. There's also cabanas there. They have bathrooms, places to change. During the summertime, they have parties down there. They put out a dock offshore that the kids could swim out to um, and even lifeguards on duty. So this is a great way for the community to get together and enjoy the beach and have their own exclusive little spot to hang out that they pretty much are only going to be there with their other residents of Hope Ranch. In addition, they have tennis courts and they have a private security patrol that goes through Hope Ranch. And all this does come with a cost, so one of the negatives of Hope Ranch is the fact that there are association dues. Every year, residents pay anywhere between two and three thousand dollars for these amenities, the bridal trails, the, the security, the beach, the tennis courts. So it comes at a cost, but they're really nice amenities and a lot of people really love them. You will get some ocean views and some mountain views from various properties in Hope Ranch. So another great reason why people love living there and the lots tend to be bigger, at least an acre, sometimes more in the homes. Um, like Montecito can be older, but there's also a lot of really nice ones. It's just a smaller community, not quite as big as Montecito. Number three, the third most expensive neighborhood in Santa Barbara is going to be the Riviera. Now the Riviera is right above downtown when you come in on the freeway if you're coming through Montecito and you enter into Santa Barbara and you're on the 101 freeway when you look off to the right if you're coming north from down south you'll see a little hill dotted with beautiful homes that's the Riviera the Riviera is split between the upper and lower Riviera the upper Riviera is really where you're going to find the most expensive homes that's where this is really finding its place in this list of the top three most expensive neighborhoods now these ones will have obviously amazing views that's the one thing the Riviera is known for it has these great views across the city so even at night, you're gonna get all the twinkling lights. You could see the cars going along the freeway. It's really, really pretty. And then in the daytime, of course, it's amazing because Santa Barbara, known for its Spanish tile roofs, so you could see all those along downtown. It really makes for a nice, um, aesthetically pleasing downtown scene from up on the Riviera. And then you could see some of our main landmarks like the Arlington Theater, which has a really cool tower, the Granada Theater. Um, all these things are visible from most homes up on the Riviera. Now there's some really nice big homes that have been updated and remodeled and some of the sales prices going up into the seven, eight, and even nine million dollar price point. So that's what is really allowing it to get up here on our list of the top three most expensive neighborhoods. Some of the downsides of the Riviera. The streets tend to be a little bit narrow and windy. You don't have a lot of street parking, so that's something to consider if you're gonna be living up there. And if you like getting out and walking, you know, a lot of people are walking in the streets, but there's not a lot of room, so you just gotta be looking out for cars. It's not like it's really busy, but there's no sidewalks and things like that, so you know, you're kinda on your own whenever you're out there walking around and enjoying your neighborhood. Other things, the slope can tend to lead to lots that don't have these big sprawling yards like you'll find in Montecito and Hope Ranch. They tend to have the bigger yards, the flat yards. Riviera is a bit more sloped, so you're gonna be dealing with um, maybe not as much of that kind of uh, lawn with a pool and things like that. There are a few pools, but they tend to be abbreviated a bit smaller and it's just a little bit denser. You know, the, your neighbors are a little bit closer to you when you're living on the Riviera. Some of the downsides of the Riviera may include 
getting across town, you know, you have to get off the Riviera, which can be a windy little road to traverse to get down to the flats, the main area of town. And then to get to downtown or the freeway, you're gonna have to cut across several stop signs, which could be backed up with cars. Um, so you just gotta be a bit more patient. Um, it's not so easy just to run to the store and get a quart of milk or something like that if you gotta do something really quick, um, depending on how high you get. Obviously, the higher you get in the upper Riviera, the longer that drive's gonna be. Other negatives of living on the Riviera, possibly foundation troubles with homes up there. Some of the older homes do need to have their, their foundations retrofitted because uh, over time the expansive soil or whatnot, it may slip or drainage may degrade it a little bit. And that's um, being that we just came out of a really wet winter, that's one thing to also consider. These sloped properties up in the foothills do have to manage their drainage properly. And that could be something that, that causes a little bit of a headache, a little bit of pain for an owner who has to spend some money on that. It's not the, the best way, the most fun way to spend your money um, fixing your drainage or fixing your foundation, but definitely something to consider if you're looking in those areas. All right, so that's the list of our top three most expensive neighborhoods. Now let's dive into the top three least expensive neighborhoods in Santa Barbara, starting with the east side. Now the east side is right at the beginning of Santa Barbara. After you come out of Montecito, you'll enter the east side. You could get to it through the 101 freeway or cutting down from the top of the Foothill Highway off of the 142. People love the east side because it is flat and close to the beach. So if you like to walk to the beach or you like to ride your bike, it's really easy to do. That's really nice. One of the best things about the east side is that it's flat and it's pretty close to one of Santa Barbara's most beautiful beaches, East Beach. You could get to it just by walking. You won't have to go up any hills. There's lots of sidewalks. Milpas Street has an underpass right under the 101 freeway. So that's really nice to be able to have access to East Beach so easily. Another great aspect of the east side is Milpas Street. Milpas Street runs parallel to State Street and it's the east side's own little downtown commercial district. You've got great taquerias up and down Melpa Street. There's a Trader Joe's and a Sprout so you can get all your grocery shopping done there. And plus plenty of other restaurants and other little stores and shops that make up that commercial district. It's long and wide and it's anchored on one end by the Santa Barbara County Bowl, our premier outdoor concert venue that's rivaled by very few other outdoor venues. It's one of the most beautiful places you can go to see an outdoor show. And so this is just on the, the outer edge of the east side over by Santa Barbara High School. Now let's dive into some of the negatives about the east side. Of course, there's density. There's a lot of homes built close together in many of the neighborhoods. And being that this is an expensive town, a lot of people will double up in a room, triple up in a room, have big families living in homes. And so this density will create um, an environment where there's just more people living in a smaller area. So that's something to consider whenever you're looking at the east side. Another thing, if you're further away from the freeway, like over by the Santa Barbara Bowl, that section of the east side, it can be a little bit of a crosstown traffic commute in order to get yourself to the freeway. So you could get on there and, and buzz up or down um, depending on which direction you need to go in. You know, the 101 freeway is one of the main ways you get up and down and, and across town here. It's really efficient, but if you're far from it, um, it you know, it's, it's a choice. Do you want to go across town so you could use the freeway or just take the long route across town? So these are some of the things that, you know, maybe you'll grapple with if you're living on the east side and you got to go somewhere um, depending on the time of day. Another thing to consider is crime on the east side. Now, it's not like it's an unsafe place to be, but you will be on alert for car break-ins. You know, if you have anything that's um, like a purse that's right there, uh, it could be tempting for someone to smash and grab it. Um, also, there is some gangs in Santa Barbara, east side and west side gangs, so they tend to have violent crimes against each other, not so much against anyone else, but you may notice like um, that these things do happen in your community if you're living on the east side or the west side. And uh, these are things that are just part of the community that um, are you know, unfortunate, but there. Next, second most inexpensive neighborhood on par with the east side is the west side. Now, I've talked about the west side just a little bit explaining the east side, but the west side is over on the other side of State Street, on the other side of the freeway. This is an area of town that is closer to downtown, so it has that going for it. It's also 
charming. It has a lot of older homes and an eclectic kind of style of architecture, but a lot of these great California bungalows and with a little bit of Spanish flair to them. So if I'm gonna compare the west side to the east side, I would say the architecture, the style, um, the neighborhood, it's just a little bit more charming. It feels a little bit nicer in a, in a lot of ways in, in some areas. And it just has that diversity. You know, the section closer to the freeway may not feel it as much, but as you get further away from the freeway, up towards the hill that goes over to the Mesa, it becomes a little bit nicer and, and a little bit more variety in homes to pick from. But similar to the east side, you're gonna be dealing with things like the density, um, Parking definitely more so on the west side is, is tricky because um, they just have less curves um, and the density is probably the most dense out of all the neighborhoods, even more so than the east side. The east side has a little bit more breathing room compared to the west side, so that's something to consider. But it does have good access to downtown and the harbor, all that oceanfront on the um, section just below the Mesa. So that's all pretty accessible. It's all pretty flat. You could walk it easy bike ride. You're also next to Santa Barbara City College, one of the best community colleges in the country and it's very close so if you have a kid going to City College this could be a great neighborhood for them to live in with easy access to campus. Another great thing about the West Side is their commercial district on San Andreas Street has a couple of really great little restaurants and it has a grocery store called Foodland so that's another um, nice asset to have to where you wouldn't have to really leave your neighborhood if you need to get some of these things that everyone needs on a daily basis. And you could even go out you know, to dinner and just walking out your home. Finally, one negative about the, the west side is the proximity to the freeway. The section that is close to the freeway is also right next to the train track. They run parallel to each other when it runs through the west side. So that edge of the, of the community of the neighborhood is impacted by both the freeway and the train tracks and that tends to be the least expensive homes in the neighborhood. These are the ones that are going to be at the lowest price point that you could get into Santa Barbara for without a doubt. Um, you're just going to have to deal with the nuances that come with living next to the train tracks and the freeway. All right, number three most inexpensive place to live in Santa Barbara. Now this is kind of a cheat because it's not an actual neighborhood, but I'm gonna highlight some of the areas around Santa Barbara proper that you may wanna also consider if you wanna be in Santa Barbara, but you wanna to try to get in and more of the entry level price points that we have here. Now, these areas that I would point you to would be Goleta, just north of Santa Barbara, or Carpinteria, just south of Montecito and Summerlin. These two communities have a varying variety of, of sections you could choose to live in, but they each have their own little kind of basic entry level neighborhood markets where you could get in for similar price points that you'll find on the east side and the west side. The thing about Goleta is that that price point will get you probably a little bit more home than it would over on the east side or west side. So, you know, if you're spending a million bucks, you might get just a little bit more home out in Goleta versus Santa Barbara's west side or east side. And same with Carpinteria. Carpinteria has um, a few communities that are in that entry level price point as well. Maybe not that size jump that you might get as far as a little bit more square footage in your home if you choose to go to Goleta, but you will get um, some options that are at that entry level. And the great thing about Carpinteria is that it's a really small, cute little beach town, um, very quaint. So if that's something that, that speaks to you that you're looking for, that type of lifestyle, it's a really great spot to go. Um, and you're already past the main traffic area if you have to go down south a lot. Let's say you're working down in LA or anywhere south of of uh, Santa Barbara or Carpinteria. Um, it's really nice to be living in that community because you get a jump on, on that commute traffic. If you're coming from Santa Barbara, Goleta, getting through Montecito can be a little bit slow. All right, that's my breakdown of Santa Barbara's three most expensive neighborhoods and three least expensive places to live here in the south coast of Santa Barbara. I'm Joe Parker with the Santa Barbara Group at Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. I really love making these videos to help you guys understand what Santa Barbara and living here is all about. So thank you for watching. 
Don't forget to give this a like and subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date with more videos I'm making about Santa Barbara and living here on the South Coast. It's a beautiful place to be. I'm making these videos for you. I hope you're liking them. Don't hesitate to reach out. I love hearing from people that are watching my videos and having conversations with me about their specific needs. I'll answer all your questions and point you in the right directions so you can make your Santa Barbara dreams come true. Thanks for watching everyone. Make it a great one.